Hey guys, what's up? Good evening, Sunday evening. Coming in and see what you guys are all up to. Made some rosin today. I'm um, catching up on some emails, getting into, you know, Mondays tomorrow. So trying to catch up on some emails tonight. And, and I figured I would really just kind of come on here, hang out with whoever's here. And, uh, you know, pretty much we'll talk strips and then whatever else you guys want. To, we'll talk strips and then whatever else you want to talk about after that. Um, give some people some time to get in here. I know some of you guys saw me. I was in the chat in uh, on Mouse's stream earlier. I didn't want to overtake that, but I definitely want to give you guys a heads up on what's going on with the strips and whatever else is going on at PLC, which isn't isn't all that much. Some PLC sixes are right around the corner, a few things, but give everyone a few seconds. We'll get going. All right. Hey, Mayor, what's up, bro? Give me a poor connection here. We'll see how that works. Um, yeah, yeah, how are we doing? 30 people in here. <coughs> oh. All right, good enough to start. So, the story with the strips. Turn this down. Story with the strips. Oh, super similar. Anyway, so the PLC photo boost strips are, you guys, hopefully, you guys mostly know what they are, what they consist of. But it's our linear light engine featuring the Samsung 301B white diode and the Cree XBE high efficiency photo red. So packing that into what we call our photo boost spectrum, yada yada. But we put it in this linear form factor which really isn't on the market yet though if you've heard of Samsung they're pretty much trying to release their own. Not exactly as good as this but very nice nonetheless. Anyway, ours, we did a soft launch and the th reason was is because we have three other products other than the photo boost strip that we're concerned about and really it's it's two the PLC 6 and the PLC 330 and before we or kind of as in development of, of these strips pre-launch we had a lot of commercial orders and we still do um, but a few large ones a couple 125, 150, two over 300 so some really really big commercial orders for our other products the PLC 330 and the PLC 6 so with that said, to produce, say, 500, it was really like 750 lights we had on the line right there. To produce those amount of lights, it's just, it's, it's a huge financial toll for us. And it's great because obviously we make money in the end of it. But to produce them is a high cost. And we're a low margin operation. So, you know, in the end, we don't make too much. But anyway, it's a lot to produce. So to do that and to put money into a new product and enough of them, obviously, we didn't quite do that. We were just basically spread out too thin. Now, also, I completely under, and underestimated the photo boost hype or the photo boost um, demand. It's not even hype because it's real. You guys ate these things up. The first thousand, it was 888 that went online the first day. They were sold out in three days. And that was, I think it might have actually been two days. So anyway, it was extremely fast and way, way faster than I, than I thought. Now, granted that we had a month of anticipation up to these. So a lot of that was kind of like hyped up demand that needed to get initially filled. Didn't quite do that. We definitely still have a bunch of you guys on, on the hook on the line for, for boards from the next launch. So we said, okay, what's, what can we afford to, you know, we need to produce more. So let's produce a thousand more real quick. We got diodes as quick as we can, but we're buying the Samsungs as fast as they're available in stock without just ordering a quarter, a, you know, quarter million right off the bat, which we didn't have, we couldn't do at the time. Um, like I said, we had the sixes, we had the other, the PLC 330s. So we had different diodes out the ass anyway. Um, well, so we did. We bought, we bought as many dyes as we could. We put them out there. And those are what are getting placed right now. And that's what everyone's waiting for. There's another 1,000 boards on their way here, which it'll do well. There's a few larger orders that I'm trying to push off so they don't eat them all up. But um, the 1,000 boards, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with most of you guys for a little bit here. And maybe at the very end, we'll have a little bit of backup again. Yeah, I'm freezing, dude. It's like 54 degrees here in the garage right now. Maybe 52 by now. It's 54 earlier. It gets really cold. It's like 49 by the end of by when I wake up in the morning, when I come out here. But um, that's why I'm in the beanie and, and the jacket. 
and the beard is just no shave November continues into December. So, um, where were we? The boards. Anyway, so the thousand are coming. That's going to get eaten up. Well, we filled all those commercial orders that I was talking about, at least two of them. One of them dropped out, which is a bummer, but hey, it actually frees me up with some cash. Um, the other ones have basically gone through, finished out, and, you know, a couple of them are just like, okay, we can take care of that. Long story short, leaves, leaves us money, leaves us the ability to go into these photo booth strips because these are what we see really taking over and giving us the best, the, the best position going forward because not only for us to build our own pre-made lights, I think it's gonna, it is the best option of the best light engines we could use or come up with, um, but for you guys in the DIY world on top of it because currently we produce commercial lights. We don't really sell a lot of that DIY. I mean, cobs you can get anywhere and you can do it, and I've got videos on that, but... As far as the 330 or the, the PLC6 housings or things like that, it, you know, not as DIY friendly. This, to give you the exact component that we're using as the light engine, let you guys do whatever you want, DIY style, because honestly, you guys do a lot of things better than we do. Some of you don't do it as, you know, as encompassing. So to let, you know, whichever side of the spectrum you want to end up at, that's up to you guys. And then obviously we'll eventually here be producing our own units. So long story short, with all that free money, we're basically putting 200k into uh, into board stock here, um, real quickly here. So the thing is, it's like okay, we could wait four weeks to get diodes to get a thousand worth of, a thousand worth thousand boards worth of diodes, or we can wait four to six weeks to get 5,000 or 10,000 boards worth of diode stock just directly from Samsung. And so that's what we're doing. Like I said, we didn't have the ability to do that right at the very beginning of this launch, and we also didn't anticipate the demand was really the issue. Um, a thousand boards in two days. Like I said, there was an initial, initial hype demand that wasn't filled, but that is just, uh, that's a lot of boards. Um, very quickly. Rolando, what's up, man? I, I've been, sorry I didn't get back to you. If you just go back and watch this, it'll explain everything, but I'll shoot you an email. I'll shoot you an email because I know we got, uh, you got an email too. So that is the position with the strips, basically. Going into 2019, we're going to have, an, or coming up here, and Okay, I guess I'm not done because the thousand strips that are coming, I switched manufacturers to keep up with this demand. Uh, not manufacturers, but assembly houses. So I buy all the diodes, they're making the boards, and then assembling them. Um, or they make the circuit board, I give them the diodes and everything, they, they assemble it. They can do it at a higher speed than my other shop down in Carlsbad can do it. They're over in Pennsylvania, so I'm still getting everything made in America. Good to go. Um, anyway, these thousand boards... They, uh, they make their PCBs in Pennsylvania, but they don't source their aluminum from here. So I was told that it would be bam, 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 and I already had diodes in hand, so it would just be like a week to place them. Well, apparently their aluminum's sitting in customs. Um, I've already got the diode shipped to them, so once that gets there, it should be fairly quickly to put the boards together. But yeah, they're, they're basically trying to push out their full, you know, what they quoted me when they say like, oh, we can do it in two to six weeks, and now they're like, you know, saying their delivery date's at the five-week point. It's like, eh, I don't think it's actually going to get there. We're going to get boards here pretty soon, probably in the next week, week and a half. But, um, but yeah, these are just just on a hold-up. Worst case, you're looking at, like, December 20th is the, the the next board launch. But, like I said, I'm really hoping to get here more closer into before the 10th. On top of that, I do have the pick-and-place here in the shop. It's the desktop pick-and-place. It does it does quite well. Um, it's only like five or six thousand chips an hour, but you know I can produce forty boards a day here um, and do that. And I have enough diodes actually, so I might be able to get a quick hundred boards on here. But you know, hundred boards with you guys—that's nothing. So I don't even want to get your hypes up. But uh, if you happen to be, you know, sign up for the alert boost. That's the or the alert list on PLC. It's on the contact page. I believe it's on the home page, and it's probably on the photo boost. Um, the photo boost page, but it's definitely on the contact page. And what that is, it's just an alert. So that way, before these go online on PacificLightConcepts.com, all you guys will get an email 24 to 48 hours in advance. Probably going to be 24, but I'm going to try to give you as much time as possible. If you're signed up for that list, you'll get a link in your email to some to you know a uh, a product page that's in stock that's not visible to everyone else. So that's why you want to do it. So if I get a thousand boards in and you guys are all on the list. By the time they actually go live online, there might be 100 left. There might be none left. I don't know. But the fact is, if you're signed up, you'll have the best opportunity to get them. After this launch, so come the new year, like I said, we have um, 
10,000 boards coming in at the new year, and then whatever we need after that, we'll be able to pace out. So we will not be out of stock of photo booths in the new year, just possibly the mid, the beginning of the beginning to mid of December, standard green jeans practice. But with all that, we're going to, what the fuck is going on outside? Damn, dude. Um, anyway, with all that, it's going to give us the ability to, uh, Jesus Christ, dude, they're just rage. The neighbors are raging right now. Um, Anyway, it's going to give us the ability to bring the heat sink in. We found a heat sink that works really, that should work really, really well. I'm going to test it. I got it extruded by my guy, so I found the extrusion elsewhere, but it's pretty much a public mold. Um, anyway, he can, he can make it fairly easy. So my guy will make it, get it to us. Uh, we'll be able to price it well. It, we, the idea is to have better, th it should be mu uh, not much better, but better thermally than the Heatsink USA one inch profile because that thing's just kind of like, it's good, but it's, you know, it's good for what it is, but it's convenience, but it's not the, it's not the ultimate. Um, but a heat sink, an appropriate heat sink, and then eventually we'll have a full frame to house these heat sinks. It looks similar to a, uh, you know, a Spider or the Gavita or the Illumitex or even Spectrum King's new unit. It's a, it's a linear, you know, it's what we have behind us here. It'll just be a more polished, uh, complete unit. Probably be running Powerland drivers like we talked about in the last stream, which is available on my YouTube if you guys want to go check out that one. Um, I may put this live stream on my YouTube. I might as well. People don't really like the vertical format, but you guys on Instagram obviously don't like the horizontal format. So, um, you know, this is for Instagram. So if you want to rewatch this on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube currently and I put it up, hey, deal with the vertical format. Oh. <sighs> Powerland drivers are hard to get for your like onesies, twosies, but I can when you're when you're a company and you're buying like hundreds, two hundreds, or a thousand drivers, yeah, any driver is the same because if you're buying a hundred or two hundred or well, hundred or two hundred you usually can get kind of on on demand. But if you're buying a thousand drivers or more, you're waiting anyway. Um, you're never getting those like right off the bat. So whether I order Powerland or I order Meanwell or I order e ERP, they all have the same lead time for the amount of drivers that I'm going to be getting. And uh, so yeah. It's just a matter of what we're going to get. Yeah, just economies. Of, it's like economies of scale. Like, I'll get them cheaper than you guys, but I have to buy a thousand of them. So, you know, I spend a lot more money. That's that's the idea. I really look forward to the heat sink, too, because it's the missing link. Once the heat sink's done, it's everything. Because Here's a Chinese grow bar heat sink that I got. You can see, oh man, oh, it's hard to, come on baby, expose, expose for this. Okay, well you can see we got our boards on it, but it doesn't really have a, it's got two side fins here and then a rounded top and it's actually, you can't see it because I got the end cap on here, but it is, uh, it's hollow. There's really not much aluminum going on there, but it's around 550 grams in the same length as the Heatsink USA profile is, is around a pound or 450 grams. So essentially there's a hundred extra grams of aluminum. It's anodized, so there's a little extra weight there and whatnot, and you get the point. But there's a hundred extra grams there, and it cools better, or, and it's got a shittier design, um, doesn't maximize the capture of airflow or air movement, so yeah. Well, yeah, they are, but for, for accessibility of anyone and in the 25 and for their price, it's pretty good because once you go up, because if you go in for a bigger heat sink profile, that's where you start spending money. So anyway, these are pretty cheap. I got to figure out the shipping. I mean, we'll probably most likely have a full container coming over, so we should get good shipping. Anyway, I definitely think I can, um, I definitely will beat heat sink USA's price, uh, both as is and shipped because they kill you on shipping. But um, that combined with a frame, so we'll have pre-made units, and uh, we'll also be selling the single heat sink like this with the ERP. This is a 50-watt driver, but just imagine it's the 80-watt driver. Um, it's only about an inch longer uh, with the 80-watt driver attached. So it'll be an all-in-one bar. Look kind of like this. Um with an 80 watt driver and buy as many as you want of those and just plug them into a freaking surge protector if you wanted to build up massive lights or you could obviously we'll have a probably like a 46 by 42 inch frame is what I think we'll end up with it could be 46 by 46 but 
that's just really pushing it. You really don't need your bars all the way out to the 48. You really could do like 40 by 46 and be good. Um, 46 being, you know, this way, 40 being this way, the way they spread, they're not as even off the ends of the, or not as intense off the ends of the bars as they are off the sides. So you could do with a 40, 46 layout would work really well. Um, so. Yeah, 80 watts, 80 watts per rail. The heat sink will, will handle 100 because I know a lot of you guys want to push them to that, uh, that upper end of their, you know, at closer to 50 watts per two foot strip or 100 watts per four foot bar there. Um, so I'm going to make sure that it's got the aluminum, even if I have to change the mold a little bit. So. Oh, God damn it, it's cold in here. Um, I don't know the price. We don't know the price. All I can tell you is the price of the boards. This is all stuff currently from what we've been talking about for the last probably five minutes here. This is all easily into 2019. I don't have, um, I don't have a heat sink. I, I can buy it from one company, but it's a little pricey. It's 15 bucks before shipping. That's already what the Heat Sink USA profile is shipped. So um, we've got to work on that. But I, like I said, I can make it cheaper than the Heat Sink USA with my guy. So figure it out. Um, just got to give me a little time. But in the meantime, we'll have boards. That was the beginning of this. If you guys are just popping in, essentially it was to say that we're struggling getting off the ground with boards here. But come 2000. Come 2019, or actually already started last week, the order went went on, so it's already in motion. Um, about about a quarter million dollars worth of board production going in, so so really going hard on the boards. Jesus, sorry for all that cutting out. I don't know what's going on with the with the signal, but uh, yes, they are they are quite a bit more efficient than Cobb's. The best thing we can do for a system level. Um, unit right now. I mean, we could do a little bit more, but for the price and everything, the system level, we're really topping out at about 2.1 micromoles per joule. And that's really, really like the upper end that's topping, talking like anti-reflective op, uh, glass optics, um, you know, 95% uh, efficient drivers, just really pushing the edge all the way at 277 volts, like pushing every little bit of efficiency as where with the, uh, new strips, with the new photo boost strips, we can hit 2.6 at the system level quite easily. Um, we don't necessarily need optics as anymore because of the way we're distributing the light in the actual frame. There's much less light spill. It's unbelievable. The numbers are, the numbers are really surprising. Um, and, and I guess it would hold true for a lot of the designs that are similar to this. But when you're hitting 2.7 micromoles per joule at the board or even 2.5 or above at the board and you're putting out 660 plus watts, that's a lot of light in an area. And when you're running it at 12 to 18 inches, because you'd think these things could be at like six, but really 12 to 15 inches is like perfect. And I think that's just enough room to give you some growth time before you have to move them up because running things at dick high six inches, you're gonna be changing, you're gonna be raising your lights every freaking day. And a lot of growers don't wanna be doing that. And if you're running 600 lights, you gotta figure out a different way, but it's also a different game when you're running. Anyway. So more strips coming in probably Worst case, December December 20th, but like I said, I'm hoping for before the 10th and um, or around the 10th. And then after that or in the new year, 10,000 are, are coming right off the bat. So like I said, why, why should we wait for 1,000, 1,000, 1,000? Let's just, you know, took some shuffling around and some, some time to complete some things. But but we're going we're going full bore and uh, – or not full bore, but, yeah, full tilt, I guess, into, into the uh, – into the strips. And then for the DIYers out there, uh, you know, you can take like there's stuff called LED spray. It's a silicone spray. It's used in the reef aquarium world quite a bit. It's it's pretty good. Anyway, you just spray it over there and you have a waterproof or water resistant. It depends on how thick you go, but you can completely waterproof your light that way. Um, if you are heavy foliar spray or whatever, but overall they're pretty good. And come in the new year, we'll be using the new Samsung. We're using the 301Bs right now, which are the uh, most efficient still even technically a couple more than the H, but we will be moving into the H with that anti-sulfurization coating. Just helps them in the greenhouse environments a little bit more and any kind, just any kind, especially well, obviously for the, uh, if you're spraying or releasing or burning sulfur or anything, but just in general, um, no oxid oxidization, things like that. Yeah, 301Bs are fantastic. Um, 
Yeah, really good diode. 56, uh, 56 or the 561, the 5630 diode is was really good too. But the 3030 package, which is what I was working with with Cree, but Cree just never stepped up to the table as far as efficacy. It's just just mid mid bin at best. They have a couple things coming out eventually. They always kind of like PLC, I guess. They always have it coming out. Um, anyway, one day, whatever's top of the bin. I'm not a uh, I'm not a huge Samsung fanboy. I love their performance, I, and I really actually I'm becoming one more and more with the fact that they're dedicating so much into horticulture. It's just uh, it's impressive. Um, and not just dedication, but the fact that they're actually performing at the top level. Even the Reds that aren't at the top of the game, um, the, they're competing with price, I guess, is how they're trying to play it, or giving you more in their in their board. But nonetheless, it's performing very, very well. you got the Samsung, you got the Cree, and then you got the Osrams at the top, top, top. But if you use twice as many Crees as someone's using Osrams, then you're ahead of their Osrams. And then same thing at the Samsung. If you start using three, four times as many Samsungs as someone's using Osrams or Crees, you can... You can skin the cat many ways, but in the end, it's all about board level efficiency. And uh, the 301Bs, as far as white's concerned, are packing the punch, and they're small enough that we can uh, we can make the density in the boards, whether it be linear or circular, like mouse's pucks, or more square, like a quantum board. The density can be had, and uh, we can do some really good things in the garden with that much light. Start tuning some spectrum on top of it, and uh, good to go. I've used the Osram 30 or uh, 2835. I've used the Osram 3030. I've used the Osram uh, 5630. Mid powers are pretty good overall. There's a lot that are really close, and even the kind of mid tier mid powers, efficacy wise, are kind of up there with the upper tier Cobs. But at that point, you know, just use a Cob and be simpler. Um, I also like the hey, I like the XPG threes, the old you know quote unquote five watt diodes. Those things are still fantastic. Not quite a mid power, just uh, price doesn't work out. Anyway, tons of ways to skin the skin the cat. But I just really wanted to get in here, tell everyone what's up with the strips, the uh, the kind of hold back and, and what's to come. It's more what's to come. Next year will be fine. Plus with the accessories and everything, be good to go. But for those of you guys who are get, trying to get off to the ground, running right off the bat with the newest coolest. Before anyone else, like I said, the 20th, December 20th at the latest. <sighs> Take another dab. Um, anyone's got some questions, let them roll in. I haven't really been playing with, uh, haven't really been keeping up on chat, just been blabbing myself. So I'll run back, see if you guys got anything. If you got anything, throw it up now and let you guys have a good night. Make up for okay, so that's a good question. Would the increase in efficiency between the old PLCs and the new PhotoBush strips make any make up for any price difference? Try not, <coughs> sorry, choking and reading at the same time. Trying to figure out uh, her upgrade plan or uh, his upgrade plan. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So anyway, these are like they're they're pretty good. If you have a three thirty. Uh, well, basically, we're trying to build something that's going to replace the 330 with these strips so we can use these strips instead of producing that board and that whole whole light. It's just not worth it. Um, we're doing it for commercial because we've already got ETL and some things on that light, so it, it's easy for commercial. If you have some large orders, some really large orders, like 50-plus, let me know on the 330. We can make it happen really quick. But other than that, the goal is to have the new um, photo boost lights, photo, photo boost strip lights take over that. So if this is just a, it's a superior design, in my opinion. But if you'd like the more concentrated board, the more concentrated, we can do that too. Because four of these boards is the same as...
excuse me, eight of these boards for, you know, two, four, or four, four footers, that is the same as the PLC 330. And with these boards, it's actually an improvement because as we're hitting like just under like 2.4 with the 330, this hits 2.6 at the system level, 2.6 and change. And that's with, um, I'm not going to spec it out yet because it's not consistent, but we have a lot of the very top end SLs coming in, although it's spec'd out with the SKs. So there's a, you know, there's a good chance it'll overperform what's stated. Um, nonetheless, it's got solid performance, like, like we're saying, at the board level to begin with. So yes, it actually is, if you're talking new lights, um, you don't need to upgrade. Obviously, if you've got PLC-6s or something like that, or even CXP-250s, if you have something like that going, think about how much it's produced for you. Think about um, how much you're paying for electricity and your kind of goals for that. Do you want to increase yields? Do you want to decrease electricity? Do you want to decrease electricity and increase yields? Because this efficiency over, say, maybe a CXP250 setup, that could be done in the, in the 1.8 range to the 2.8 range. Basically, I have almost a 50% increase in light for the same wattage. Those are really good upgrades. But from like a 330, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be an upgrade if you're adding more because you only have, we don't have the 330 anymore, so. Um, BTUs are a, it's a calculation of wattage essentially. So you're going to have 3.412 BTUs per watt, no matter what it is, whether it's a sodium, whether it's an LED, um, whether it's a fluorescent, that calculation is going to be consistent. All energy is essentially going to be turned into heat at some point. It might be stored in, in a biochemical form via photosynthesis. That does take up a little bit, but overall, you know, that is kind of consistent across either one. So it kind of, it's give and take there. Anyway, um, you guys are on my phone, which is also my calculator. So if you're at 37 watts, it's 37 times 3.412, and that would give you your BTUs for the strip at 37 watts, 1,400 milliamps. If you're running at 50 watts or 49 watts, it would be 49 times 3.412. Now, there's obviously the difference in... Um, HID has a uh, IR component to its beam, as in the farther you look into the IR, you hit around the 850 range, 840, somewhere in there, you see this big IR spike. That's the actual heat that you would feel under your hand. LEDs don't contain that. All the heat is more or less radiated out the back, and that's why we have heat sinks. Um, so you don't feel it as much, but the overall what the system had to deal with, if you were to have a cooling system, that would need to be 3.412 per watt. Yeah. You're anonymous, what's up? Yeah, lumberjack as fuck, I know. I got a beanie on because we're at like 52 degrees probably by now. It was 56 when we got in here. and just keeps going down. Um, it's usually like 48, 49 when I get in here in the mornings. So it's, uh, it's cold. And yeah, rocking No Shave November. I'm actually going to keep it another, uh, another month. So we'll see how grizzly atoms I can actually pull this off. I'm married, so got no one to impress. I can look like a hobo all I want. I did have a meeting with Cree last week, and, you know, they obviously know my business, so I just looked a little extra stoner than usual. But uh, when the other dudes are wearing suits and you're wearing hoodies and hoodies and a grungy half-ginger beard. Will the Europeans get any chance on sourcing the strips? There's a good chance. I know some, you know, it's not, there are some companies that, uh, you know, I can ship it to the company and then they export things out from there. What happens after I ship it, that's it. But as far as me shipping to Europe, that just, uh, it's just not, they're not, um, they're not, I haven't put them through CE compliance yet. They are, everything would, there's nothing wrong with them, um, but it's just that, that factor. And so, because uh, we don't have to do it in the U.S. market. So, if you, if you know how to get them, yeah, you can get them. There'll be a lot. Like I said, especially come, come the first of the year, there will be a lot, and you guys, would, uh, there should, there'll be enough. So, if you guys want to stock up somewhere, it's, I'm not going to be sending them one, two, threes over there, but if someone wanted to buy a good amount, whatever, deal them off like that, that's up to you guys. Fuck yeah, bro, it gets cold in Orange County. Nah, 
So, can't believe you're still in here, bro. Yes, IR, so back to what we were saying before about the BTUs and what the IR in there. The IR is what raises your canopy temps, and that's why you need to run lower ambient temps with HID, because even though the ambient temps are lower, the IR is still heating the leaf surface and the internal of the leaf, because it's not just leaf surface, it's the internal too. Um, LEDs can do good on the surface sometimes, but not as well on the whole, whole leaf. Temp. Anyway, skipping ahead, uh, LEDs don't have that issue. A little stoned. All right, one more rip, and then we'll get out of here. Like I said, got a few more emails, a couple things to get organized for tomorrow. I'll be out. So if you get an email, there's probably only like four people left to email, but if those four of you get an email tonight and it sounds a little weird or missed a few punctuations, I apologize. filming today. Nothing for Macro Monday tomorrow. Maybe I'll get a shot or two in later tonight after all this stuff, but <coughs> we'll see. It's a busy week. Don't know if I'll be on IG all that much, but uh, we'll see. <coughs> um, the list for my board release is, it should be on the home page, I'm pretty sure. I know it's on the con... I know it's on the contact page for sure. It's on like three places, but contact page for sure. It's the only... I'm going to check right now. All right, so home page, scroll down. Home page, scroll down, that black box right there. Email, you don't really need your first or last name. Um, if you wanted to say, hey, I wanted this many in one of those things, that would help me out, but totally not necessary. I should probably figure out how to actually have that ask that. But anyway, it's right there. It's also on the, uh, if you go up to contact, it's the first thing on there too. So yeah, I'll give you guys, the people who are on that list, and I know there was over, I think there was like a hundred and something the other day. Um, uh, you guys will get notified before anyone else. I'm trying to give you guys 24 to 48 hours, probably more like 24, to uh, give you a little private site where you can grab a couple before anyone else and deplete my stock. And then when everyone else comes and says, Green Jeans, you're always out of stock. And I'm like, well, I hooked up the homies who are on the list. That's how we roll. And like I said, I have a few here. So for a couple of the true homies that... Um, want some of the ones that I'll place here at, at my place. I can place them here. I'll make a few. But, uh, yeah. All right. All right, guys. I got to get back to my wife, to the house, and some emails. And I'll talk to, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. But we have an email for you guys who are actually concerned about strips. Um, go to the list. And other than that, peace.